Hey everyone, so in today's lesson, I want to cover a sound that can be both as simple or as complex as you want it to be, and that is diminished chords. A lot of times when diminished chords pop up in a standard, a lot of people usually play something along these lines. But with the right tools, we can turn it into something that sounds like this. Let's check it out right now. Also, as a quick side note before we start, uh, I haven't been able to upload as much just because I've been busier and gigs are coming back. And unfortunately, the YouTube algorithm is really hitting this channel hard and not pushing the content as much. So it would be very much appreciated if you could leave a comment, like, and subscribe, and that would help this channel immensely in the future. All right, let's talk about today's concept. So first off, what is a diminished chord? A diminished chord, technically, is when we have a flat third, a flat fifth, and a double flat seven in our arpeggio. So if we had C major seven, whose notes are C, E, G, and B, all we would have to do is flat the third, the fifth, and again, we would double flat the seventh. So we would end up with C, E flat, G flat, and B double flat or uh, you can just call it A. Now on the guitar, this shape is kind of difficult to play. So we rearrange the notes so it's a little bit easier and we get this basic fundamental voicing which sounds like this. Same notes and same sound, just rearranged so it's easier to play on the guitar. So now that we know what a diminished chord is, Let's talk about how to play over it. The simplest and most common way to play over a diminished chord is just simply to play the diminished arpeggio over our diminished chord. So if we have C diminished seven, we would just play C, E flat, G flat, and A. Now on the guitar specifically, we need to learn this all across the neck. Here's the basic shape. Now with diminished chords, we can move this shape up or down in minor thirds or in three frets, and it'll be the exact same notes. They're all just inversions of each other. Make sure to learn these shapes starting with your first finger as well as your fourth finger, and make sure to learn it starting on the E string as well as the A string. Okay, so playing the diminished arpeggio is one way. What's another? Well, we can use the diminished scale as our next way. This is an eight note scale that sounds like this. Make sure and learn this scale all across the guitar, just like we did with our arpeggios. Here's the shape off the A string and off the E string. The same principle that applies to our arpeggios also applies to our diminished scale. Make sure and start the scale off different notes of our C diminished arpeggio, as well as linking different patterns across the guitar neck together. Here's an example. You can also play this scale in four note patterns going horizontally across the neck. Check it out. Also try combining the diminished arpeggios with this scale. Here are a couple examples of doing just that.
Okay, so we have the diminished scale and arpeggios under our fingers now. The next level is playing dominant chords over diminished chords. This is just the Barry Harris family of dominance theory. For more info on this concept, make sure to check out this video in the corner of the screen. But basically, we have four dominant chords that we can play over a diminished chord. The quick way to explain it goes like this. You can play a diminished chord off of every note of a dominant 7 flat 9 arpeggio. So you'd have the flat 9, the 3rd, the 5th, and the flat 7. So C diminished could be the flat 9 of a dominant chord, the 3rd of a dominant chord, the 5th of a dominant chord, or the flat 7 of a dominant chord. And those chords are B7, A flat 7, F7, and D7. So now all you need to know is some language over alter dominant chords, in this case, uh, flat nine. Here is a great line that you can use over this type of sound. Now combine this line with our diminished scales and arpeggios. So now we're really starting to get some ideas going. Remember that any idea that we've covered over this, you can play over just C diminished or any of the dominant chords that we've previously just covered. Let's talk about some application now. So a common place to see diminished chords in songbook tunes is over a walk-up progression like this. Easy living and It Could Happen To You are great examples of tunes that use this type of progression. So now we have to just think about which approach we want to take over the diminished chords. We could use the dominant sounds, we could use our scale, or we could just play the diminished arpeggio. Here are a couple examples of mixing all three of these types of concepts together over this type of progression. Another place that you could see diminished chords pop up in songbook tunes is as a sub for a dominant 6 chord in a 3-6-2-5-1 progression. Again, here's an example of how to approach this type of progression using the concepts we covered in this lesson. Last example that I'm going to show you today that you can see uh, a diminished chord used in songbook tunes is as a sub for the one chord. A great example of a tune that you can see this on is Upper Manhattan Medical Group. In the tune, he goes one diminished and then one major. It just delays the resolution to one a little bit. Here are a couple examples over this type of progression. So you can see, diminished chords can be as simple or as complex as you want them to be. You could just play a diminished arpeggio over it and that would sound fine. Or you can play the diminished scale over it. Or play a dominant sound over it. Or combine all three. You can really have a lot of options over this type of sound. I would practice this by isolating each individual sound. So right lines focusing just on arpeggios or just on the diminished scale or just using language that is over a dominant seven flat nine sound. Then once you get good at each individual one, then try combining the concepts together like we did in this lesson. Really, if you have about four to five diminished licks, you'll be good for most situations that we encounter in songbook tunes. Thank you guys so much for watching this video about how to solo over diminished chords. 
If you want me to cover and expand upon more ways to play over this type of sound, let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you like these kind of videos, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, and that lets me know that I should keep making these type of videos for you guys. Thanks for watching, and remember to always keep swinging.